this brings us to this uh, important question that uh, so what really happened what really happened from uh, 2004 to all the way till uh, 2012 of course the semiconductor industry did not uh, die so you know something must happen right so what i'm uh, showing here are uh, actual images of uh, uh, technology uh, generations different technology generations and i'm showing the image actual images of transistors from these uh, different uh, different uh, technological generations so uh, 32 nanometer which was launched in 2010 45 nanometer 2008 uh, 65 nanometer 2006 90 nanometer uh, 2004 so looking at these images probably we can you know we can get some knowledge uh, what actually happened uh, from 2004 uh, to 2010 so this is an analysis done by uh, Victor Moroz uh, from uh, a colleague of mine from uh, a colleague and a friend of mine from uh, Synopsis and uh, so what he did was he Victor what he did was he uh, carefully plotted uh, all these uh, images and uh, on the on this chart the important thing to note is all these images have the same scale so these are not scaled up or scaled down but they have essentially the same same scale so we can um, uh, compare them over here and then what Victor did was he actually a uh, very painstakingly he measured the physical gate length. So what Victor did was he measured the physical gate length that is the length of the gate from uh, from uh, the gate line from uh, 90 nanometer to 65 to 45 to all the way to uh, 32 nanometer. And uh, what he uh, came up with was actually quite uh, it's surprising that uh, Mr. Denard says that you know keep on scaling the gate length by uh, 0.7x every generation but uh, what uh, which was uh, which is stated in the ITRS uh, roadmap also so the ITRS roadmap says that you know, every technology generation from 90 to uh, 32 you should be essentially going along this chart which is 0.7x reduction in gate length with every generation but what Victor found was actually it was it was not uh, happening like that what he found was actually the 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 gate lengths were only scaling as point neck point nine x every every technological generation so uh, he that was quite surprising but then maybe you know we think okay so they're in that equation that i described earlier that your uh, id is proportional to this w uh, by 2l into your c ox into your uh, you know vg minus vt square so this this length is actually not not the not the physical gate length so what i mean by that that you can have a transistor with a very large uh, gate uh, with a very large uh, gate length but it's actually this length uh, so it could have a large physical gate length uh, but the source and drain could be diffused the junctions could be diffused further and this this length in this formula is actually this physical it's not this physical uh, gate length but it's uh, it's uh, this uh, uh, electrical gate length or also known as l effective which is essentially how far is your source drain junction uh, from your uh, how far is your source junction from your drain junction so uh, victor uh, what he thought was okay they're not scaling the physical gate length but maybe they are you know they're bringing uh, they are diffusing their implants uh, further such that your source and drain uh, come together and uh, they they are probably you know scaling the effective length so to double you know to make sure that uh, whether it's happening or not uh, what uh, victor uh, further did his analysis where he also measured this uh, not only the physical gate length but he also measured the measured how far these uh, junctions were diffusing and so you know you can use very sophisticated uh, techniques such as uh, sims uh, to measure how far your implants have diffused and you can calculate actually you know the shape of uh, your dopants and uh, you can calculate you know where exactly is your uh, soul drain junction so shown here is is this 90 nanometer node and it has a physical gate length of uh, 45 nanometer and the junction is diffused till here and 
and this effective length is actually much less than the physical gate length it's actually only 25 nanometer but to his surprise when he measured the same thing in 32 nanometer nodes so this one has a physical gate length of uh, 30 nanometer and he measured these junction how far they were diffusing so they were diffusing much uh, less so they uh, uh, moving from uh, 90 to 32 people were able to control this diffusion of uh, junctions uh, even better and this uh, gate length was actually you know quite surprisingly it was not scale at all it was scale from uh, from uh, three technological generation it went only from uh, 25 to uh, 24 nanometer so victor uh, plotted his uh, analysis in this uh, very nice uh, chart so what he says was uh, your uh, gate length actually uh, since the last uh, eight years have been scaling as 0.9x instead of uh, Mr. Uh, Denard's uh, prediction of uh, 0.7x. The junction actually has been scaling, the junction diffusion has been scaling uh, quite well and they have been you know scaling like 0.7x and the physical, uh, the in, sorry not the physical, the electrical uh, gate length which is the separation between your uh, source uh, and the drain junction that has not scaled at all so this has pretty much stayed around 25 nanometer uh, for you know for uh, for four technological generations now and uh, victor primary mori uh, you know he said that there's a sweet spot of uh, gate, electrical gate length you want to operate it and a lot of it has to do with the uh, variability and we'll talk about that later that if you are if you keep on reducing this uh, effective uh, gate length you increase your variability uh, quite a bit and it becomes very difficult to make uh, uh, make microprocessors which have uh, billions of these uh, transistors uh, without uh, you know without hurting uh, uh, with all of them working so the, the that's one of the reason but essentially the 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 main conclusion i want to draw is this uh, effective uh, gate length in our equation for current hasn't been changing so the but but you know what was Moore's law was not exactly dead people were actually printing uh, more and more transistor in the same die so the number of transistor was actually increasing uh, twice uh, for the, every technological generation so how was that happening since you know the physical gate length which which essentially determines how many transistors you can print was actually going uh, as only 0.9x so how was the transistor density your uh, transistor density was how was it scaling up or your how was your actual transistor area or your uh, how was your actual transistor area for an SRAM was going down or your density was uh, going up and the reason of that and how this was being made possible is that instead of scaling the physical gate length so the physical gate length was actually just scaling as 0.9x but the contact for your uh, transistor which is how far is your source and drain from your source and drain uh, plug from your uh, from your gate that was scaling much more aggressively and so your uh, actually your pitch was still scaling as a 0.7x because your uh, contact according uh, to this analysis by victor was becoming more and more closer to your uh, to your uh, gate and um, this is bad for uh, parasitics as we'll analyze in one of the problem sets but essentially it reached at a point at 20 nanometer 22 nanometer if you wanted to uh, continue scaling this uh, this uh, in this way there was no space left for contact so there was no space left for to land your uh, contact so this really kick started this era of uh, non-classical scaling that is scaling not governed by uh, mr denard's uh, denard's uh, law but we essentially look for more variables or uh, another means that we can still use to enhance our transistor performance or increase uh, or decrease our uh, decrease our uh, circuit delay so what mr denard uh, said was you know scale the width and the length and uh, he scaled the oxide thickness but oxide thickness was is now as we realize we can't scale it any further uh, as a consequence of that we cannot uh, scale 
till the volt voltage any further but you know what about these other terms so there is still you know this term mobility and there's this uh, term that i didn't look into earlier which is this dielectric constant of my uh, gate dielectric so can i uh, can i play with uh, these terms and uh, uh, most of the uh, you know improvement in uh, your uh, chip performance has since 2004 has uh, come from these uh, from these non-classical scaling uh, methods. So shown here is uh, is this chart uh, described by uh, Kellen uh, Kuhn from uh, Intel, and what she is showing is that you know if if you look from a classical perspective, we didn't really scale the scale the electrical gate length much. So if you look at the current, actually from that classical equation, we you wouldn't get any improvement. But we were, we were still able to improve this uh, current because we employed all these non-classical techniques. So we up employed this uh, technique known as strain silicon, which you used to modify your mobility of your transistors. And that, you know, gave us uh, this uh, this much increase in our uh, current. We also employed this high K metal gate technology and that gave us this further since starting from 45 nanometer and that gave us this further increase in the current so since uh, 2004 what has happened is essentially this uh, non-classical scaling so which requires this um, uh, scaling this uh, strain silicon uh, this high metal gate and more recently a change in the transistor architecture and we will uh, we will spend uh, another uh, section talking about these uh, recent developments and we'll spend another section talking about these uh, trigate or uh, fin fed transistors